Hello, my name is Joseph Sharon, and I would like to speak with you about the $27 million Sotheby's Chinese Northern Song Dynasty Rueware Fraud. The truth and the proof. You'll hear it here. here. Uh, now, talk a little bit about the root kiln. The root kiln went from, was uh, uh, operating from 1086 to 1127. There were two emperors during this period of their operation. And uh, the one emperor we're going to speak about uh, is Emperor Huzong. He reigned from 1100 to 1127. Emperor Huzong was a, a, a artist and a musician and he amassed uh, a mass amount of fine artworks during his reign and uh, he also developed a, a uh, his own calligraphy style uh, and he he was a fine artist but he was the first emperor in Chinese history to commission a, a kiln to produce wares exclusively for him and his court. Previously, no emperor ever did this, and he was the first one in Chinese history to do this. Uh, he wanted to develop his own wares, and he had been receiving a lot of tribute wares from uh, the root kiln and also the other kilns during the Northern Song Dynasty. Now, these five pieces here are merchantware pieces. And merchantware pieces were sold to the wealthy merchants and the wealthy class of uh, uh, the Northern Song Dynasty. Uh, and what, what happened when a piece uh, came through the kiln and it was flawed, they would take these merchant class pieces and they would sell them to the population at a much cheaper price. So the, the, the population was able to buy them very cheap uh, because these were quite expensive back in, in that time and only the wealthy could afford them. Then there's this this piece here, this particular piece here, Sotheby sold in April of 2012 for $27 million. April 12th, 2012. And it's flawed. It's a flawed piece. And this would have been a merchant piece that was sold to the population because of all the flaws in, in it. And... Uh, has firing flaws and glaze flaws and it's just not a fine piece that uh, would have been taken out and sold to the population at a cheap price and these pieces here uh, they have the f sesame seed size and shape sperm marks the merchant class pieces. They have a, 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 a fine glaze and it has crackle. It goes from a dense crackle to a fine crackle, a thin crackle, or a sporadic crackle. And it can vary from piece to piece. So the crackle is not the same on each piece. And these are the merchant wear pieces. They're very fine pieces, finely potted, and they're glazed inside and out. And they were fired on stilts. And these stilts would cause these spur marks when they pulled it out of the kiln and it would leave these little marks, these sesame seed size and shape spur marks. 
and that's the merchant wear pieces. And I'm going to set these aside over here. Then we go to the tribute wear pieces. Now the tribute wares were uh, given as tribute to the emperor and his court for tribute. And not only the root kiln was giving these wares to the, uh, to the emperor, the other kilns were also. And uh, these tribute wares have fire gilted bands on the rim and the base and sometimes only on the rim and uh, these fire gilted bands are heavily corroded with cuprite and malachite and uh, cuprite and malachite cuprite forms first in the corrosion process and malachite grows on top of the cuprite and this cannot be uh, this is only happens in nature. It cannot be done in a laboratory or any way, shape, or form. It can't be faked. And from the book, uh, Copper and Bronze by David Scott, the existence of malachite formation over a layer of cuprate is supported by analytical and metallographic studies is a good indication of the authenticity of the artifact. In other words, when this cuprite and malachite occur in the corrosion process, they're authentic pieces, they're ancient pieces. It cannot occur any other way, shape, or form. It just cannot occur. And how you recognize this, you'll, you, uh, you can use your loop and you can look at the corrosion and you'll see a reddish and the green growing on top of the red not the other way around it has to be red first and green growing on top of it. the cuprite first and then the malachite grows on top of the cuprite and that's the only way it occurs and it only occurs in nature now this particular piece oh let me show you This, this is a photograph of a piece that shows you the cuprite and the malachite. The red cuprite occurs first, and the malachite, the greenish, bluish, mainly green, uh, grows on top of the, uh, the red. And this was enhanced 500 times. So that, that shows you the uh, corrosion process. And all, all the ones with the fire gilded bands, you'll see this corrosion. And sometimes they clean these pieces. Uh, and uh, you'll see traces of uh, cuprate and malachite after they've cleaned them. Uh, then the, uh, these two are tribute pieces. Now this one, this particular piece, was embellished, and I, I didn't even know these existed until I owned them, and uh, uh, they uh, gilted, they trimmed this in gilt, uh, and this particular piece has a uh, a mark on the base but it's got nine characters in that mark and it's beautifully done. I wish I could read Chinese and tell you what it said, but uh, I don't read Chinese. And this is a, a piece that has been embellished and also here, this heavily crackled piece, this has a um, phoenix on the inside a highly stylized phoenix and this is just a magnificent piece and this has dense crackle they had very good control over the kilns back then it took them time 
not everything came out perfectly and and they had a lot of failures I'm sure but they really knew how to control the kiln and uh, this work and this also has the gilt edge painted gilt edge on the uh, rim and uh, I, I believe these two pieces are uh, were given to the Emperor as tribute pieces. Then uh, we go back to uh, let me put these aside over here. I'm going to show you something that is very very rare uh, this piece here these actually these six pieces here they have no crackle in the glaze whatsoever and there's only one other piece that's in the museum in the the palace museum in Taiwan that has one piece it's not a, it's not a, it's a, a merchant wear piece but it, it doesn't have the fire gilted bands on it but it has no crackle in there and every once in a while they would come through the kiln without any crackle and I believe they can they were able to control the kiln so well after all the time they did develop these pieces they were able to create crackle or not crackle depending on just what they wanted to do but there's only one in the world and I have six right here in front of me and these are uh, they have the fire gilted bands and uh, you can see traces of the cuprate and malachite if you use a loop on these pieces but they're very very exquisite pieces they're beautifully done and they are uh, just magnificent pieces I thought I would show you those. Then we go to. Uh, I reached out to many museums. I reached out to many museums and universities. Uh, go, I'll go down the list a little bit here. Uh, the National Palace Museum, the British Museum, the Philadelphia Art Museum, the Cleveland Museum, the Smithsonian Sackler Free Museum, the Asian Art Museum, the Seattle Museum, Getty Museum, uh, Metropolitan Museum, uh, University, uh, uh, Yale University Museum, Princeton University Museum, Cornell University Museum. I reached out to these people trying to contribute uh, some rueware pieces to them donate them for no cost to them and they were they seemed uh, several of them seemed ex some of them never responded back to me but some of them seemed very excited in the beginning to the possibility of receiving rueware until they found out who they were dealing with and they basically shunned me and uh, now I'm going to show you these pieces. These are the imperial pieces that Emperor Huzan commissioned the root kiln to produce for him and his court. Now it's been said that they they had crushed agate. They put crushed agate in these pieces. They didn't put crushed agate in any of the, the merchant wear pieces or the tribute pieces or the piece, this piece that, that uh, Sotheby's claimed there's crushed agate in there. It's just they didn't put it in there. Uh, they said they ground the agate stone down to a powder. It's very difficult to... to grind agate stone into a powder and first of all agate stone will not uh, uh, melt 
in these kilns because it 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 it, it won't melt until it's 2200 degrees or 22 something degrees and the kilns were like 1200 degrees so any little chips or anything like that would show up in the glaze but none of these pieces here have agate stone the only pieces that have agate stone in the glaze is these imperial pieces that the emperor developed for him and his court he helped develop these pieces he wanted it he was a uh, like I said an artist and he saw art as uh, being a uh, he saw uh, simplicity in art he wanted beautiful forms and a very modest glaze a celadine glaze a greenish blue celadine glaze and he wanted them to be distinct and have a little bit of texture to them so they put this crushed agate stone in these pieces they ground the crushed agate up and put it in into the glaze and if you get a loop you can actually see the crushed agate stone little glints of light from the tiny 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 flakes of agate and you can see that throughout all these uh, pieces the imperial pieces that I'm showing you here and uh, this one piece here let me put this over here I'll show you some more but this one particular piece here it has a small, a very tiny uh, uh, clump of uh, glaze, a very small, maybe an eighth of an inch by a quarter inch glaze that was left over. And if you look in it with a loop, you can see the blue agate chips. They're tiny. They're very, very tiny, and uh, I have this, these pictures of it. This is this is the the uh, foot rim, and it shows that little tiny. This is a 200 uh, time magnification, and it shows the. You can see the blue blue uh, agate chips. And this is a 500 magnification, and you can definitely see them there, the blue uh, agate. And what you see uh, with this piece, they didn't grind the agate stone uh, fine enough, and it, it left these pitted marks in the glaze. And if you look in the glaze, you can you can see it leaves the agate actually leaves little tiny pits in the glaze. And uh, but this piece is also you have many many times these pieces are marked, and this is marked uh, uh, Fen Hua. That's a tribute to China. So they were giving tribute to China, not giving tribute to the emperor or anything like that, because these were the emperor's pieces. And uh, here's some more here, some other forms. And they had very, very beautiful forms, and this is what he he wanted. These forms have many of these forms have not even been seen in the public and a lot of the forms were passed down the ones that were seen were passed down and used in uh, other reigns that uh, uh, came after uh, the northern Sung dynasty root kiln and uh, these pieces are just magnificent but like I said the, they have a very uh, uh, simple mark it's uh, scratched in it's not anything done 
perfectly or anything like that. But they also have the bases that, that was written about in ancient ancient books. They, they wrote about these pieces, these imperial pieces, being celadine color, having agate stone in the glaze, and the foot rings were not glazed. The emperor told him he didn't want the foot rings glazed. He wanted them to sit flat in the kiln so they wouldn't stick to the kiln floor. He didn't want to see the sperm marks, and these don't have sperm marks. But they also, the emperor, uh, saw beauty in all these pieces, whether they had flaws or not. So flawed pieces, they stayed in the court, even if they were flawed, because he looked at each piece as being an individual piece, and uh, uh, being uh, uh, having its own character. Each piece has its own character, and that's how he saw them as artistic pieces. Now these imperial wares are the true imperial wares that the emperor who's on commissioned a root kiln to produce and they and like I said it's been written in 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 books that these are the pieces with the celadon color uh, and the uh, crushed agate stone in the glaze and the foot rings that aren't uh, glazed they were fired flat in the kiln where all these other pieces uh, the tribute pieces they all have the sperm marks and uh, these don't but uh, Sotheby's and Christie's have been controlling the and, and Bonham's they control the art market and they've told so many lies to collectors and this is one of their biggest lies because they say there's only 70 in the world and I'm showing you more believe me I have more than 70 pieces in my collection of Ruware and uh, they they uh, uh, these pieces are very very important the, the ones and quite rare these are rare you won't see these everywhere, these uh, imperial pieces, and the imperial uh, rue wear. You won't see these everywhere. And uh, I think that kind of covers it, but I have to say that collectors that collect with... Uh, uh, and and buy through the auction houses, they're getting they're getting taken over by these auction houses because the auction houses aren't selling the finest pieces, they're selling a lot of junk pieces, and not really selling the masterpieces. They're lying to people about the masterpieces and the the rarity of these pieces, and 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 stuff like that. What's happened is China has opened up, and many pieces have come out into the market because everybody cannot participate in the auctions in China. Uh, only the elitist and the party people can uh, participate in the auctions. And when uh, uh, during the Rue Kiln period, her Huzan's reign, they were invaded by the Jin armies from the north and they fled to the south the court and the uh, the emperor was captured and he died in captivity so when they fled they fled without any of their ruware or any of their artwork anything like that they had nothing when they fled south and uh, they uh, uh, these pieces, I believe this collection here is part of the Emperor's uh, 
stores of, of artwork and um, and w uh, when you buy through the auction houses you're you're they're not showing you the best pieces uh, I have a website at ChineseMasterpieces.com that's ChineseMasterpieces.com you can go to that website and you can look on there and other kiln pieces I, I compare them with some of the pieces that Sotheby sold uh, that are supposed to be so important and everything and uh, I put my pieces next to them you can see the difference and uh, uh, I, I have a, quite a few masterpieces on that site and you can see them and uh, they should return this the person that bought this this piece for 27 million dollars they committed fraud they swindled him and and uh, and uh, they should return his money because this is not the truth this is the big lie of Chinese arts and they've been lying to collectors because they keep telling people everything is fake or this or that they're liars and they're thieves and they are and not only the major auction houses the uh, the lower end auction houses also are lying to the collectors they're keeping out the better pieces because they know they can't sell a better piece than what Sotheby's sells or Christie's sells so they keep them out of their auctions and if it's not known to them, they won't sell it. They won't sell it. So they're, they're lying to collectors, and it's only a matter of time before they get uh, uh, this, before collectors wise up and see that they, uh, they are purchasing not the finest pieces because you can see more and more pieces coming into the marketplace and uh, and better pieces than what are being sold on on uh, Sotheby's and Christie's in uh, uh, it's only a matter of time the pieces that that are being sold on those auction houses aren't going to have any value whatsoever like this piece uh, I wouldn't give you five cents for it because it's not worth anything it's a flawed piece there's 70 of them of these flawed pieces around the world that Sotheby says there are but they're junk they're junk and uh, uh, there's many finer pieces that are in the market other than Sotheby's and Christie's and, and Bonham's they're liars and they're thieves and uh, that's my opinion of them and I uh, you can go to my website, like I said, ChineseMasterpieces.com, and I hope this is informative to you, and that's about it. Thank you.